Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. Good morning. We are here back in Arizona. We're going to hit some trails back in the desert, but step number one is get some fuel in the truck and in the Jeep. Welcome back to the epic family road trip. We are the Van Stralen family. We have been overlanding and off-grid living full-time for the past eight years. Through both good times and bad, our love for adventure has not diminished. Today we are driving into a remote area of the Sonoran Desert in southwest Arizona. This desert covers the northwestern Mexican states of Sonora, Baja California, and Baja California Sur, as well as part of the southwestern United States in both Arizona and California. It covers an area of about 260,000 square kilometers, or 100,000 square miles. The Sonoran Desert has an arid, subtropical climate and is considered to be the most tropical desert in North America. In the lower elevation portions of the desert, temperatures are warm year-round, and rainfall is infrequent and irregular, often less than 90 millimeters or 3.5 inches annually. Many plants thrive in the harsh conditions of the Sonoran Desert. Due to its bi-seasonal rainfall pattern, there are more plant species here than any other desert in the world. The Sonoran is the only place in the world where the famous saguaro cactus grows in the wild. Chola, beaver tail, hedgehog, prickly pear, and organ pipe are other types of cacti found here. At first glance, the desert can seem barren and lifeless, but nothing could be further from the truth. The Sonoran Desert is home to a wide variety of animals, birds, and other creatures, such as the bighorn sheep in the mountains, gila monster, bobcat, mule deer, antelope, jackrabbit, burrowing owl, roadrunner, western diamondback rattlesnake, and elf owl. Since getting our new overland truck in November, we have been able to take it into some of our favorite areas, but most of our overlanding so far has been long distances driving from Colorado through Utah into Arizona, and then all the way up to Oregon and back. We've put on almost 4,000 miles of highway driving, and we are very impressed with the on-road capabilities of this truck. We are now excited to test the truck's off-road and trail capabilities. We have explored these desert trails with the Jeeps for years, and we are eager to find out what the experience will be like now in this larger vehicle. Alright, we are off the dirt road and onto the trail, and doing some Jeep trails in the truck. Doing well so far. So one of the really cool things about this area is that there's old mines all over the place. So we've just come across a mine here. Carol's already out walking up there 
and I'm just gonna park the truck and then we'll go for a hike see what we can find. Everywhere you go here are just mines. Just if you start staring at a hill, you'll just see one hole after another. It's pretty amazing. I'll show you guys some of it here. I don't know what this is. Oh well. Wow. So what's the point of it? I don't know. So there's some kind of structure built here. I thought maybe it was a well, but it goes down about 20, 25, 30 feet, and then it exits over there. So I'm not too sure what they used it for. You don't think there's any snakes? <laughs> kind of creepy. I can't figure this one out. I wonder if it had like a roof on it. I don't, I don't know. So even here, this was probably all a structure. Oh my goodness, that's a big hole. And at the bottom is pure white, which could be the quartz. Oh yeah, I see snow. that. Yeah, you can kind of see the white. Oh wow. Like look how far, and look how yeah. deep the hole is. Like you could put a whole, Ooh. the Jeep in there. No doubt. You see the white at the bottom? Yeah. Probably quartz. So they blocked it off with this big metal cap. Interesting. Well, I guess either they found no gold in there or they mined out whatever it was. So why did they cap it? Like so you don't fall it? in. Just for safety, I guess. Interesting. Whoa, that is way bigger than it looks. Probably goes way down into the left as well. Maybe, yeah. You can see it does, like it curves black that way. Wow. This one uh, looks like a whole shaft system. Probably going over to that one. Who knows how deep that goes. There's a big piece of wood blocking it. Like, I wonder how they got down there back in the day or if they A lot did. of these mines were for gold and other precious metals or minerals. But uh, I think last time we came through, a section of this trail years ago and we read a lot of them were dug or were in uh, use back in the early 1900s and when World War II happened they shut them all down like a, apparently because it was a waste of resources or something to just be having all these individual mines out here so it mostly went to the war effort at least that's what I can remember from us reading but it's obvious that I mean, they're either still doing stuff or a lot of these are old ones that they finished up with, but they're pretty hastily covered over. I mean, that's a big chunk of steel, but uh, right on the corner here, Dan, come look at this one. This probably goes 100 feet down with just wood. So Be careful, though. They their way down there and blasted with dynamite or just big machines. But... I want to climb into the other one. If you had a rope and a good anchor point, then the lights would be neat to go down there. It's probably 100 feet deep and there's a wooden, like, platform halfway down and who knows if this joined that one you know I didn't even hear that thing stop it just so it like slowly got quieter Whoa. see that platform in there? Yeah. this used to be a building right here because this is all the platform for it must be some kind of slough I just wonder where they get the water up here Looks like the mine shaft might be there. The one up there. That looks more recent. Because on the other side there's an actual hole. It's That's so dope. pretty though, all the rocks and the different colors. Cool as gold. Thought I had it there. Must have been a big thing. 
in here and then this was all the different uh, so i made the mistake of wearing my um workout pants not a good idea when you're out here with all the prickly bushes and cacti rocks just doesn't mix well so i think i'll switch pants when we find camp um but yeah this is a really pretty area just the rock colors are amazing and the history kind of reminds me of being going through the colorado bdr i would love to do the california bdr i mean that the northern part would be really special so hopefully we can explore up there when the weather turns a little bit warmer but yeah this is pretty cool as you know i love rocks <laughs> but uh i don't know much about them but they're just so neat fascinating how they can tell a story of mountain ranges and just m minerals and things like that but really really cool i'm glad we came back out here to explore a little bit while we're waiting for the truck to get licensed licensed up um so yeah, I think we'll carry on down the trail. There's a few spots we really want to check out. And then we'll head into camp, make dinner. This is kind of a big step. Yeah. Wow. I think we need to get some uh, steps put on. Mm -hmm. There's Dan filming his channel, so you guys can go over there and check it out. Sometimes we do similar adventures like what we're doing today, but you get to see it from Dan's you know, own perspective and uh, using his own creative style, which is cool.
Lando loves running ahead of the trucks, and as long as he sticks pretty close to the trail, he can avoid stepping on cactus spines. But every once in a while, he wanders off, steps on something sharp, and has to stop. It's a lot. Wait, man. It's okay. Wait. Should we get his boots? He's okay. Wait. Man. Here they are. Stay, Lynn. Wait. You gotta hold up. Stay, but wait, Lynn. Poor Adam. I'm in the Jeep for a bit. This is cactus. So. Although he definitely does not like wearing his booties. If this happens again, we're going to have to put them on him. Man, <laughs> 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 you're crazy. How do you jump so high? You almost got it. <laughs> Uh, we're just going to trim a, a, a branch off uh, one or two of these little bushes and see if we can widen the trail a little bit. So I think the battery's in the back of the Jeep. Ah, oh, those are sharp. want to do yeah the trail just gets more and more narrow um, unless you if you find a camp spot around here th this could be a good spot you want to be high not in a, a gully or I was a hoping to make a fire but this is kind of windy unless yeah. we can uh, dig a shelter for it but um, we'll see how how the rain if it picks up or lightens up but it looks like it's definitely raining coming all through the mountains here okay so let's pick a higher spot
So we found a decent spot. There's not much level ground anywhere around where we are and you have to kind of go over that mountain pass. And, and uh, so we think this might be a pretty good spot. Uh, Pete's gonna put some rocks under. So on my pitch and roll here, it's zero degrees front and back. So we're, we're level this way, but we're five degrees down on the driver's side. So shouldn't be any shortage of rocks out here in the desert and see if we can level it up. And we'll get camp set up and start making something to eat. All right, so we've got leveled off here, got a really nice spot. It's really scenic. We're surrounded in mountains. We decided not to go up into the pass uh, because it, it's getting uh, dark a bit early today because of the heavy cloud. And you can probably see behind me, there's some rain coming through. Um, so the combination of rain and it's unseasonably cold. Uh, we were talking to some locals and they said that it's, it's not usually this cold, but, um, and then we've got a decent wind so we decided not to cook outside tonight, which is normally what we do. Um, and Carol's gonna make something in her chef's kitchen in the truck. I mean, that's why you get a truck, right? When the weather's not ideal, it's nice to have a place to retreat with four walls. So that's the beauty of this uh, Ross Monster Baja. We can go in there and Carol can make a full meal using uh, the stove and the sink and all the comforts of home. Uh, I think I told you, but Dan is parked just up the roadways a little ways and he's got his own heaters and batteries and food and he's a self-sufficient guy out there, him and Lando. So uh, yeah, I think we had the, uh, the chairs out, we were going to sit and have a camp night, but it's just too cold. So we're going to retreat to the uh, cabin. Let's go. There's so many little cave things. I don't know if they're animal or like man-made. Really neat. All right. Any ram's horns? <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. All right, so we're, we're gonna get the heat going in here so, you know, and I'll be able to take off my jacket, but um, it's just wonderful to be able to sit back here in comfort and um, offload the footage from today and start laying it out, you know, doing some editing and doing other work. We also have a Starlink on the roof, so we have full connectivity, even though we're way in the middle of a wilderness area. So we're, uh, we're loving it. It's As the wind blows in the clouds and the rain, we retreat to the comfort of the truck to make dinner. Mom noticed that in past videos, she almost always announces what she's about to cook as a very simple meal. I'm going to be making a pretty simple meal. It'll be a simple taco salad. We're just gonna make a simple uh, scrambled eggs. I'm going to be making a really simple Chilean salad. This time, she is determined not to say that. So we were going to be making some steaks over the fire tonight, but as you can kind of hear, the rain is really coming down now and the wind has picked up. Um, so I was looking through the fridge and I decided to make some simple 
Yeah, I'll hold it further away from you. Over <laughs> <laughs> trying to be the simple steak meal. Yes. I'm gonna be making some soft tacos. Um, something quick and easy. <laughs> Can't help yourself. Well, they're so easy. We just get so excited on the trail, we forget to make a lunch. But uh, yeah, so wow, you should see the rain coming down. It's actually really cozy. We'll make a tea while I'm making dinner. It's raining. The, the smell out there of earth is amazing. been into a big town yet to restock so this is basically all I could find in the three stores that I went to um, there was a, a dollar store and some other type of dollar store and then I found a little market and they actually had some good lettuce and some green onions and some fresh tortillas that were made somewhere around here so just something to think about when you're out and about always hit the bigger towns if you want fresh veg Are you in our bed? Yeah, it's comfy. There's just full Wi-Fi here, so I wanted to watch uh, Lord of the Rings, so I'm just downloading it. <laughs> you can just get any movie. It's the beauty of Starlink, but also the uh, comfort of having a home on wheels like this. After a day of filming and being on the road, you can just relax. Hot. Wow, just like that, the sky opened up and is clear again. Seems like it changes every every hour here. Just beautiful sunset. So I'm done um, heating up the cheese and tortillas, and I'll start on the meat. The boys are out there filming. Oh, that is really pretty. Just gotta show you guys this lighting. Isn't that just... Amazing. I don't know if I have any taco seasoning, so I will have to kind of make do with uh, what I have. So I find that happens um, quite a bit when we move around arrangements or you get a new kitchen or build with your vehicle. You change out things. Even when we were doing it for weekends, all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't bring the main ingredients for this meal. And so then we just ended up making up a whole new meal. And it works every time, so. So I just remembered my sister Beth gave me this right before I left her house. She canned some jalapenos so I can dice that up and add it to the tacos. These are our favorite. Every time we go to my sister's, we always wanna pick these up. So 
what I thought was going to turn into kind of a disaster, I think we pulled off a nice meal. Be yummy. Everyone's hungry after we saw that beautiful sunset. As we sit down to eat a delicious meal in the comfort of our new truck, we are very impressed with the off-road and trail running capability of this vehicle. We are excited about the possibilities that this opens up for us, and we look forward to the many overland expeditions ahead. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. Thank you.